Luca. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're here to have a fun time today, I would say. Sure hope so. We're here to play a, a tabletop role-playing game. Games are fun. And we're going to start this game today by doing a roll straight off the bat, which is unusual for these solo sessions. I believe it has been a weekish since the end of the heist, and that's certainly enough time, as Masks is concerned, to roll your secret identity obligations roll. Oh, yes. Let's see how things are going. Mm-hmm. H- how you doing with all the stuff on your plate? It's... Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> oh no, oh no. That's a full fail. <laughs> For reference, um, Alan currently has a zero in mundane, so there's no saving that. Yep, so they messed up in at least two different areas. Mm-hmm, so you have your Enviro Club, your chores, and your delivery job. Hmm. <laughs> and I get to pick. Yes. Well... Considering what we have in store for today, I'm pretty sure the Enviro Club is going to be one. Mm -hmm. And as for the other one, I think with all the stuff that had been going on prior to the end of Arc 2, you probably didn't have a lot of time for your delivery job. That makes sense. So I think you're probably under a bit of stress right now because you were already kind of on thin ice with your boss from a previous one of these roles. And they probably gave you a talking to the other day saying that if you don't smarten up and take more hours soon, you could be out of a job very soon. Oh, that's not great. Very much not great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think your your parents weren't happy to hear about that either. Uh, well. Like, I think they've tried to assure you that, like, you don't necessarily need to contribute the way that you have been, but, like, you know that it would hurt if you didn't. Yeah, uh, we really need to move forward with the merchandising for Trade Mixer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully you can get some kind of, like, sponsorship deal going with someone else. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And I think today you have been talking a little bit with, um, with your good buddy Karen about that kind of thing. <laughs> it's late afternoon on a school day, late in the week. It's after school, and... I'm going to say we'll start out this scene maybe, um, maybe let's say in like the school courtyard. That's kind of a nice midpoint between where the mm-hmm. Idol Club is and where the Enviro Club is. So there's there's some nice benches out there. You can sit and have a bit of a talk before you head to your Enviro Club meeting that you have scheduled later today. Mm-hmm. So I think you and Karen are sitting out there in the courtyard on a bench. And what do you think you've been talking about mainly? Hmm. One thing would be... What could we do to find out more about the Crimson Signal situation? Like what's left the people, like those other sites and those other experiments that we're trying to do? Or or like, was Papaya even like from this world? Yeah, it's certainly not been easy to tell. And Karen hasn't been able to get back into that alternate dimensional space since you got out of it. So there's no way that you can really follow up on that side of it just yet. All you can really do is keep researching and hoping you find something for now. And also, like, Sing Star is coming up, and that's also very much on Alan's mind. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's October now. The tournament is going to be coming up in early November-ish, so you don't have that much time left to prepare for the preliminaries. Like, especially now that Alan is very self-conscious about transforming into Queen Bee because of their hair was still very, very dark. Yeah, you've still been wearing a toque to school on most days, and I did remember that I we probably should call that hat a toque <laughs> instead of a beanie, since this is Canada. That's good to know. <laughs> but yeah, it hasn't been that long since the heist for this scene, so you've still got your hair that you're concerned about, and it hasn't really faded that much yet. So still... Good to hide that. Yeah, like we wouldn't want anyone to find out things about about Queen Bee and... Yeah, least of all your other good buddy, Kenzie, who we know from your previous solo scene. Do you think you've been avoiding the Enviro Club up to now because of this? Is that why maybe you've fallen behind on the Enviro Club? 
That would make sense. Alan has probably been very, like, almost calling in sick. Mm. Just trying to avoid any situation where someone can look at him. Like, they've been texting Kenzie a lot because they do care and they're trying to make it know that. But they're probably very self-conscious about being seen right now. Yeah, I don't think your problem this time will be that Kenzie will be mad at you about missing the meetings like last time since you've been in communication with her. But she will definitely have been missing you and I don't think Professor Phillips will necessarily be very happy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe it's time to just show up, see how things are going. Yeah, I think maybe you and Karen are talking about this right now in the courtyard, debating whether Alan wants to go to the meeting or not. Well, you know, I, I, I do want to go, and I mean, there's things we've been have been left, and I, but and things that I, I'm not sure if the others can, not, not really good at doing, and maybe they could use some help, but I, I just. I'm worried they'll, they'll see the hair and uh, I don't know, think that something's up. Mm, I I agree. It's a tough spot to be in. Like, I'd, I'd be afraid of someone asking questions too, but they're definitely going to ask questions the longer you stay away. Yeah, I... I should really have, like, better excuses. Well, we, we know we have the the one story, at least. Um, if we end up talking to Kenzie about, you know. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I I honestly think you, you two would get along, so I'd be really, really happy to introduce, but... I hope so. It's just, you know, like, she knows Alan. She likes Alan. I... I don't... I'm not sure what she would think of Queen Bee. Well, you've always described her as being pretty cool, and Queen Bee's pretty cool, so... Yes, but Alan is not. Like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not cool, but I'm just, you know, I'm not that kind of cool. Mm, I get ya. Although you are pretty cool. Thank you. But yeah. We should go over the story one more time again, just to make sure we we're on the same page with that. Okay, so, like, I have a class with Jaden, so we got talking, and that's how I got a little involved with the Idol Club. Right, and then you and I got to talking about how we had experience with social media, and I thought you would be a good fit for helping us run the Rhythmics account. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was okay with it, and we did uh, the whole uh, big uh, Krypton Signal publicity campaign, and uh, then I found a few things about Crimson Signal that didn't look good, and I I came to you telling you that uh, have you seen this? This looks bad. And then I told you that I already knew and had known for a while, but didn't say anything, and that's what you were mad about. Yeah, and I got upset because I felt like you were like lying to me, lying to the group, and then I put you on the spot at the next uh, meeting. And then when the whole news about Crimson Signal and the kidnappings and all of that came out, then that definitely blew up in everyone's faces, and we had to reevaluate a few things, and thankfully we got to talking and came to an understanding. Yeah. I mean, that's, that sounds reasonable. That sounds like something that could happen. Yeah. Like, it still doesn't look good for me, but honestly, what I actually did doesn't look good for me either, so I'm okay with that. Uh, most of it was not that bad. Well, maybe the spine, but, you know, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, it, I think this is the most plausible way to explain what you've already said to Kenzie without, like, putting more suspicion on you okay and i'll i'll be there to help back you up too like so if we're going there today you won't be going there with no backup thank you okay yeah we we can do this this is this is doable yeah i think she actually reaches out and like squeezes your hand in like a friendly way like i got you Oof. okay yeah it's not too let's go all right go team
<laughs> she pumps a, her other fist in the air a bit as she lets go. Hey, Alan pauses a second to adjust the took, and they move towards the area where the Enviro Club is meeting. All right, so you head out to the other side of the school to where the Enviro Club meets. It's starting to get a bit colder, so your club probably won't be able to do a ton of work outdoors for many weeks longer, but for now, it's still the early part of autumn, and you can still do some work with the bee colonies, you can still do compost work, and people are out there cleaning up leaves around the school grounds as well, so the, so the club has got their rakes out, I think, now as well. And you make your way towards where everybody's gathered. I think Kenzie spots you and she gives you a wave. I think she looks very happy to see you, and she doesn't know who's with you yet, but she's looking happy for now. Alan waves back. Hey, Alan! Oh my- uh, it, It's good to see you, buddy. What's what's going on? I'm glad you showed up. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry I've been missing things. I just... Uh, lost on my plate. And I, I really wish I could be here more. Yeah, no no worries. How, how are the bees doing? Oh, the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's actually, it's kind of a shame you haven't been here. Like, I told you a little bit about how the professor has been doing with the bees, but like, look, and she gestures over to where Professor Phillips is over with the bee colonies, and he's just kind of like flitting back and forth between the colonies with a mix of fascination and worry on his face as he lifts up lids and, and looks closely at what's going on in the hives and writes down notes in his like iPad and like... Oh, goodness, oh, goodness. Because, and I think you can get the gist of what's going on here, there may or may not be several non-native species of bees from the British Columbian wilderness that have taken up residence in the colonies. Oh, yeah, Alan kind of forgot about that. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, I think when you got back from Camp Grandstar... You found them a home and with your powers kind of nudged the bees into getting along with each other. But this is not where these bees usually live. And Professor Phillips has picked up on the sudden influx of the population. Yeah, there's a lot more. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. So... I'll be honest, it's really fucking funny. Like, he just, he does not know what to make of it. Well, uh, I mean, good that there's more bees, right? I mean, yeah, I guess, like, they're cute, question mark? I don't know, you were always more the bee person than I was, but... Oh, I'd love to take a look at it. Yeah, sure, no, the, like, maybe you can help him figure out whatever <laughs> whatever befuddlement has perplexed him so. Oh, but, but oh, I, I I was forgetting, like, can see this is uh, Karen. Karen gives a, a soft wave, like... Sup, Kenzie, I'm Karen. And have you told Kenzie that Karen was the one that you were fighting with before, or does Kenzie still think of that in vague terms? I think I would have kept it vague. Okay. So Kenzie's not immediately thrown off by this. She greets Karen, like, very nicely in a way that I'm not going to immediately launch into a conversation (laughs) with myself, but they exchange pleasantries. And uh, Alan goes uh, very quickly to check on Professor Phillips and the bees. <laughs> sure. You head on over there. The buzzing in the hives is a good deal louder than the last you remember it. He is furiously writing notes in his iPad like, Oh, goodness, they did. There's so many. Are they even getting enough nutrients in there? Like, what about all the wood carters? They should be... They have what they need without the trichomes. Oh, hi, Professor. Uh, how you doing? Oh, Alan! Oh, oh, goodness! Oh, wow! It's nice to see you. Um, and he is surprised and certainly looking a little disappointed at the same time. Not that you're there, but you know. Yeah. Hi. I. I. I, I just. I, I know I missed a few meetings. I just wanted to see how things were going. A, a few meetings, Alan. You've been gone for over a week. I. I've been starting to get worried. Well, uh, is there something going on at home or in at school or? Well, not really. I mean, I got I've had some issues with my work. They've asked me to put in a few more hours, and I've uh, been a little behind on some homework. And uh, I was sick for a couple of days, but yeah, 
things are okay. Like nothing is wrong. I'm just uh, there's just so many hours in the day, and I'm having a not the easiest time balancing things. Mm-hmm. He steps away from the colonies for a bit so that you're not standing so close to an active beehive as you have this conversation. But he says, well, I suppose that's understandable, but even before this past week, your attendance has been a lot more inconsistent than it's been in past years, Alan. And I, you've had other commitments in your life and things that have come up before, and you've done much better at juggling them. I I don't know what could be so much more strenuous now. Yeah, no, I I'm really sorry. I I should I should give more priority to this. This is important and I'm sorry I've been missing out. Yes. And I I'm sorry if it's, it sounds like I'm being harsh on you, but this is a commitment that you've made and I do think it's important to honor that commitment and I hope you understand the importance of that. It sounds like you do, but again, the fact that you have just essentially been a no-show for over a week now has been very concerning, honestly. I... That's not going to happen again, Professor. I am I can assure you that. What can you do to assure me of that, Alan? I think if you want to convince him that you are going to make an effort of it, you might actually have to provoke him, I'm going to say. Okay. Because he doesn't believe you necessarily right now. Okay, let's try. Oh! (laughs) Okay, that's good. Full aid. Okay. Now, Professor, I hear what you're saying, and I want you to know I'm sorry. And, like, for the next two weeks, I'm going to be here every time. Every meeting. And I'm going to pick up the slack. Whatever was left behind, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm not sure how things are going to be going on, but for the next two weeks, I'm going to make time to make up for what I missed. All right. You're using the responsible voice that Professor Phillips knows by this point. Adults love the responsible voice. Yeah. (laughs) Professor Phillips knows your responsible voice, and he has reason to believe that you mean what you say when you say it like that. Well, I'll hold you to it, but that's encouraging to hear. I I look forward to seeing you around more often again. Especially, and he (laughs) nods towards the colonies, have you heard of from Kenzie or or Raimi or somebody about what's going on with the colonies right now. It's so bizarre. You would honestly be very interested in this. Like, I I heard there was, like, there was, like, a population growth. I was pretty excited about that. More than that, not just a population growth, but multiple different species of bees have suddenly taken up residence in the colonies, and moreover, not even species of honeybees. These are White-shouldered bumblebees, eastern bumblebees, leaf cutters, wood carters, th- these, none of these bees live in hives or make honey even. Their nesting habits are completely different from our honeybees. Like, I don't... Well, and he looks serious for a moment. I'm not going to say I don't know what's behind this because I have a pretty good theory at this point. You do? Yes. Again, none of these species are doing what they should, and... Frankly, there has been a lot of strangeness with our bees since the start of the school year. Around the time that that queen bee idol appeared at this school, this has to be her doing somehow. I know it. The strange swarming patterns, that awful downpour incident, and now this mixing of bees outside their usual habitats. There's just no other explanation. It has to be some kind of... (sighs) He shudders. Idol magic. Would it be okay for me to mark afraid? Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> Love players acting against their own self-interest. Uh, well, uh, do you think this could be bad for the bees? I mean, I, I remember you saying that they looked energized and... Uh... I mean, it's it's true. They don't necessarily look unhealthy or even bothered necessarily right now, but I do worry, again, because these bumblebees don't normally live in hives like this. They might not be getting all the nutrients they need. They they might initiate conflicts eventually with some of the other species, even if they seem to be fine now. There's no telling what could happen uh, with interspecies conflicts if something happens. I, I don't... I don't know. Well, uh... I mean... I've seen a couple videos of that uh, queen bee, and like 
she seems to have a pretty good control over bees. I I'm sure she she wouldn't want to damage them and like hurt the colony in any way. I mean, it just does that include that downpour incident? Because good lord. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's true. That's but I mean, that was the first. I'm not trying to defend. It's just that it it hasn't happened again. Uh, true that nothing that destructive has happened again. But I again, I would argue that this unnatural mixing of the species could be dangerous for the bees. And that alone is, again, reason to be concerned. But who knows how this idle magic works? Like, maybe there's some kind of, I don't know, bee mind control happening that's making the bees friendly with each other. If that should wear off at some point, who knows what could happen? Yeah, no, you're right. We This is concerning. Maybe we, we should try and separate them some way? Like, Build some sort of enclosures, or... I would very much appreciate the help with that. If you could help maybe put up some kind of enclosure around the ground so we could build some kind of underground enclosure for the ones that need that, that would be a great project for you to work on over the next couple of weeks if you're going to be here more. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I really like wool carder bees, and I'd love to like see more of them up close, so... Yeah, no, I think that sounds great. Especially we want that before winter sets in let's make plans to do that for sure and who knows if i can if i ever get the location of that idol club's room from ms doyle i'm thinking that maybe you and i could go give that young lady a piece of our minds at some point sure uh, absolutely we'll oh, i mean uh, yeah if she's there i will certainly tell her to be more careful Yes, I, she is your age. I think she'd be much more likely to listen to you than to me, especially since you have so much real experience with the bees, whereas it's pretty clear to me that she does not. I I would feel better if you took point on that. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not that... Yeah, I, I think the, the Professor Phillips picks up on that and realizes he's getting a little bit too heated. Like, I, yes, it's it's true. I am the adult in the situation, and I I know your difficulties with social situations sometimes. I, I, I'm i sorry if I'm pressuring you. It's just that, you know, some sometimes people are a little intense and uh, don't know what to say, so... Like, I, 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 I would love to be there when that happens, and no worries. I can I can take point, as it were, and, and the words sound foreign in his mouth as he says them. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think he's probably going to finish up with you at this point and wrap up like just whatever details you need to wrap up about getting this new colony project started, uh, and then we'll let you go on your way. Yeah, and I, I mean, I I really think that the, the the idol club is not it's not all bad. We could try to work with them for like the recognition to get some fundraising to spread some awareness it's true we do have that community cleanup coming up still it would be great to get more people out to help with that i mean if if we do talk to queen bee and her friends perhaps while we're emphasizing the potential dangers of what she's doing we could perhaps suggest some kind of conciliatory gesture by having them help us with spreading the awareness for the event. I think that would be a very good idea. I think they they would probably love that. I mean, uh, one of them is my is in my English lit class and I could try and tell him. Oh, I see. Uh, I think the, the gears are turning in his head. I think he's putting it together in his head that maybe you're being sympathetic to the idol club because you have a friend in it at this point. Thankfully, not putting together any more than that. Yeah. So but yes, he's he'll accept that for now. Okay. Well, uh, I I can't wait to start working on that enclosure. Yes, I know that you've made some fantastic things in the past for us, so I have no doubt this will be great. Thank you, Professor. I'll. Uh, I have to talk to Kenzie for a minute, but I'll see you soon. All right, and he he waves you off at that. You can head back in the direction of where Kenzie and Karen have been. 
I think Karen has picked up Rake at this point and is helping Kenzie to rake leaves. And I think as you approach them, you can hear them talking. I uh, I think Karen is saying like, no, no, but you, you see, Ash and Fire would totally dominate in a situation like that, like with the magma. Um, I think she could create like a moat of magma around Starry Night and she would win if the two of them were in an idle battle. And Kenzie like, it's like, oh, no way. Like Starry Night Sky, like, have you seen all the tech she has at her disposal? She could absolutely call on any of that to get over whatever Ash and Fire could put in her way. And <laughs> they're clearly arguing about who would win in a battle between Starry Night Sky and Ash and Fire. In a good-natured way. Yeah, uh, that, that makes Alan a lot less worried. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of new bees. That's interesting. He wasn't too hard on you, was he? Uh, I, I'm gonna have to make up for lost time, but I'm actually happy to. I've been missing this. Oh, that's good. I, I'll be happy to have you around too, honestly. I mean, I know that, like, you had, you, you had to take care of your your mental health first i get that but like she gives you one of her trademark friendly punches in the arm i've been missing you bud it, it'll be good to have you back around thank you alan does that oh shucks like hand to the head and then immediately gets self-conscious about the head so, <laughs> so, I, so yeah so you met karen and i uh, you know how we had like we, last time we i was here we had that talk about uh situation and I was a little, a little mad. Yeah, and Kenzie raises an eyebrow. And uh, first of all, things got solved. There was an apology, there was a, a clarification, and I just uh, was feeling a little bad about, like, you wanted to know exactly what happened, and I was like, I can tell you, and I that didn't feel right. I so... Yeah, it was like it was kind. And I think at that point, like Kenzie had been following you up to then. Like, okay, where's this going? And it, as soon as you say it was Karen, like Death Glare goes Karen's way. Like <laughs> Karen tenses up. Like, oh, oh no, no, no. It, it we're cool now. It just wait. Did, did, but how did you like? She hurt you pretty bad. Like. You hurt them pretty bad, Karen. Like, what the hell? Like, what happened? Uh, I think you, you explained to her the story that you explained at the top of the episode. Yeah, so... And then the whole thing with Crimson Signal happened. It was in the news, and I, and I could, was a little... I did feel a little vindicated, to be honest, but uh, Karen re really ap apologized, and I... Yeah, like, I'm sorry that I just didn't say anything to begin with. I... I mostly didn't because I kind of, in my heart of hearts, I kind of knew that I probably shouldn't be doing what I was doing, but I was justifying it to myself and, and, uh, um, but Kenzie still doesn't really look happy about this. Like, oh, okay. I kind of went a lot too hard on her with, with the others. I was very, very passive aggressive. Like, I made everyone uncomfortable. I, not just Karen. And... Well, it sounds like you had good reason to be. It's, like, Crimson Signal are, like, literal child kidnappers. So, like, duh, it sounds like you had good reason to be worried. Yeah, but, I mean... And she, you she, she didn't, didn't have great reason to not be worried. Y yes. It's just that, you know, like, the... The Alto business, there, there's very few places that are good... So, just... I don't know. Uh, yeah, like, that was kind of the reasoning that I gave to myself, that, like, there's no good corporations or CEOs, but not all super idols can afford to not take corporate sponsorships, so it didn't really make much difference which company it came from, so... And I guess, like, none of, at the time that I was trying to research them like none of whatever allegations against them had been proven so it wasn't even a guarantee that we had to worry about it and i think kenzie doesn't really accept that like are you are you kidding that's it's it sounds like there were all the red flags like how how i i just i don't understand it would have been super easy to avoid them regardless yeah it, 
like there was a bit of a competition thing because like you know that uh, the Fort MacArthur. Oh yeah, the, those assholes. Yeah, the the, the Rydal Club. Uh, I think uh, uh, was it like one of them as a dad who works for Crimson Signal. Like, he was giving them stuff, so there was like they they wanted to. I don't know. I, I'm not making excuses. I just like the we clear things up really. Yeah, it's... Kenzie shakes her head. Like I, t- I get, I get it. I get it. No one's perfect. No one makes the absolute perfectly right decisions about everything all the time. And I, I guess I get that you thought what you were doing for your group was right, and you weren't thinking the consequences through. But like. I don't know. I just, I still can't get behind what you did. All I see is you hurt Alan and you hurt them bad. And I'm glad that you made up. That's that's great. But forgive me if I still don't totally trust you, Karen. Okay? We're not cool yet. And Karen nods like, yeah, that's fair. And, and I'm fine with that. You You don't have to trust me if you feel like I haven't earned that yet. Well, you haven't. But I... I hope you do, someday. For Alan's sake, if nothing else. Alan is now very conflicted. Because, uh, on one hand, this is not what they wanted. They were hoping like that everything would be cool and maybe Kenzie and Kyle would be friends. and but, like It feels good for Kenzie to go to the bat for them in this way. So... No, I, I, I understand. And I'm... I'm I'm happy to have a friend who will defend me this way. And uh, but I I would like if my friends like if like you're my oldest friend, and I would be happy if you would get along with some other people I I know. There's definitely, like, an awkward, tense silence between the three of you for a while before Kenzie finally breaks it and says, I'm... I'm okay interacting with you, Karen, with... I'm okay if we have to do shit together, but, like, I think it's fair to say that I'm not going to be buddy-buddy with you. Yeah, no, no, that's fair. And I, 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 I... Yeah. I'm okay with just being like civil between all of us especially like i respect that you've made your decision alan and that you're okay with her so that counts for something well i yeah i'm I'm not ready to be friends with her yet but yeah we'll leave it there karen nods well yeah no i i hope we can be friends someday too but I, i won't push it thank you for understanding as much as you did uh, so, yeah, thank you, Karen, and, uh, uh maybe I'll, I'll, I'll see you later and we'll talk about the Rhythmix account and just um, say, say hi to Evangeline and Jaden and, uh, Oh, well, yeah, absolutely, and, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to give my regards to B as well. <laughs> she gives you a bit of a wink. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And Kenzie actually brightens a bit at that, and she's like... Yeah, the Queen Bee must, like, be your literal idol, right? Like, <laughs> you've been so into them for so long. Like, <laughs> how excited does that make you? A lot. Like, uh, yeah, it's it, it's impressive. Honestly, I kind of was kind of disappointed because she, I, I, you know, I went to see them at the Stormlight and they, she didn't really bring the bees. I, I, I was hoping for that and they what? just... What? Sucks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Zero out of ten would would never support. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know why. Uh, like, I mean, if, if they can have a magma monster, they could have some bees. Don't see what the problem is. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like, she knows where she can get them, too, obviously. I mean, the professor certainly thinks so, anyway. Yeah, no, I, I think I've seen them swarm a couple times. Like, was it two weeks ago when they were doing some... I don't know what... I think they were trying out some new members in the yard and they just the whole bees just swooped up 
Oh goodness, yeah, that was that's wild. I've seen them like again. You haven't been here as much, but I have seen them go off a couple times too. Like there was, uh, I I was here once on like a, a Wednesday night, and they were like they took off then too, and they took off in the direction of like way far away from here. They went clear off the school grounds. I didn't even see where they went. <laughs> so uh-huh. who knows what spectacular adventures <laughs> that they're having out there with her. Must be kind of cool to be able to do that. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Like, <laughs> I've never been much of a music person myself. Like, <laughs> what do I know? I listen to Imagine Dragons. But, like, who doesn't want to be a superhero, right? That's just natural, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's just. Oh, yeah, that, that'd, be, that'd be really cool. I don't know. Maybe someday. I know you've danced a lot, so, like, I don't know. Maybe it'll happen someday. I mean, I don't don't really like. It's just that was just like playing around. I'm not that. Uh, I don't think I could do it in front of an audience. I yeah, I mean, fair. Not to knock you, but I really can't see you performing in front of an audience. It's fair. Um, but I I promise you, if if you ever did, you would probably rock house. Yeah, that that's not true. But that, that, thank you. Shut up. <laughs> she gives you another little punch and, like, goes to grab a rake and <laughs> thrusts it into your hands. Get raking. Okay, okay. Get raking and working on your self-esteem. My self-esteem is fine. I just I just have a realistic view of things, you know? I mean, she's not wrong. You, you, you're much cooler than you give yourself credit for. Well... Now they're both on either side of you with rakes and like, oh no, you're being double teamed with positivity. No, no, no. Okay, Kenzie, like, if he, if I was that cool, I could pull this off. And Alan lifts a little the, the took. Ooh. Oh, so you're revealing a bit of the hair there? Yeah. I think all she's, she says at first, and she's like, What? Uh, oh, hey, did you dye your hair? Is that why you've been wearing it? Yes. Did, did you just have, like, a bad dye job or something? I thought it was weird yes. that you were wearing a hat all of a sudden. Yes, 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 uh... Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> that's... I'm sorry, that's too cute. Are you are you embarrassed about a bad dye job and that's why you think you can't be cool? <laughs> Aline's extremely, extremely flustered. <laughs> Aww. This might actually be like shame of vulnerability. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, sure. Hang on, let me pull that out. <laughs> I guess before we do this, like, what would you like out of this moment of vulnerability, ideally? It's like, Alan wants to tell Kenzie something, but they really can't, so they just, they're, they're kind of going halfway. Like, they're showing the hair, but they're not saying the truth. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess this is technically supposed to be with your team, but I, I Yeah, no, matter. that's me. <laughs> so yeah, if you share a weakness or vulnerability with someone, you tell them a secret about who you really are, to some degree, um, <laughs> and give them influence, shift your mundane up and your mask's label down. Okay. And Kenzie would already have influence over you, so I will mm-hmm. also shift your labels. Uh, no, I-, I wanted to try something, and it didn't work out, and uh, I mean, I-, I just I just don't think this color is me. I'm going to have Kenzie move your savior up and your danger down. I think she finds this very endearing, honestly, in the moment. And I think she still thinks that you could be... You could do a lot more than you could give yourself credit for. <laughs> yeah, I just... Yeah. I mean, maybe. Like, maybe if I could put the whole look together. Totally. Like, you know how good I am with hair. Like, I can help you fix that. Honestly, we could probably do something with this. Really? Yeah. Like... Have you ever thought about doing streaks? I, I've tried to get you to do streaks for so long. Maybe this is the time now that you finally have the darker shade. Alan would probably mark for afraid again at this point, but I think they, they feel like they don't really have an option and they're just, I mean, we we could try. Yeah, like sometime, let's just go back to my place after club sometime. We'll we'll figure something out. <laughs> don't mm. worry. We'll, we'll get you out of that hat eventually. Okay, yeah. No, we, we can try. I... I, I yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll get you some clothes. And we'll we'll get you a whole look together. It'll be great. I'd love that. I uh, 
Yeah, that sounds good. Awesome. (laughs) I think as you finish up this conversation, I think the three of you are starting to laugh together a bit and enjoy the rest of the club meeting. I think eventually Karen is going to head off because this isn't her club to be at. She doesn't go here, but she's going to wave you off. And Kenzie still looks a little unsure about her, but definitely more okay than when you started to tell her about everything. And Helen feels a little better. You definitely know there's still more to manage about this situation. Like, you're not sure how this whole situation with the hair is going to turn out, especially since you don't know how fast it's going to change from here. But at least you're not in the danger zone. And for now, that's fine. Thank you for listening to the third of our four interlude minisodes. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at Queen B E one five one six zero eight seven one. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at PeachGardenGames.com. Full credits for these minisodes will appear at the end of the fourth installment. In the meanwhile, Here's a shout-out to this week's cheerleaders on Patreon. Kevin, Liv C, Naomi, and Noreen. Thanks so much for your support, and stick around for an ad from some of our friends at Be Gay Roll Dice. Welcome to Goblets and Gays. We are a Pathfinder 2E focused podcast that uploads every Wednesday. In our flagship show, Blood of Kings, you can listen as a gaggle of gays grows into heroes together, from their adventures hunting down a lost city to trying to open the Feywilds to save the magic of the world of Cyrene. You can also join us every Monday over on Nat20 Productions' Twitch channel for Wayward Arcadium, our very chaotic game set in a magical school. Listen as our cast tries to pass all of their classes while dealing with drama from all sides. You can find our shows anywhere you listen to podcasts. Follow us on all social media channels at Goblets and Gays. Join our Discord community and support us on Patreon for early episodes and special releases. And remember, eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables.